I, uh, people were discussing, my colleagues were discussing the aliens, and I said, I don't believe in aliens. And uh, apparently it was about Cuban aliens, but, <laughs> 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 but, but I remember that, I had a shame that I misunderstood, but I didn't believe that. <laughs> so all the three years ago, beginning of February, uh, I finished the book, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, they feel by the Mustafa. There, uh, so she's a journalist who has a long career of investigative journalism, so she knows really well how to do it. So she sent the call, the mission, to call the political researchers of the field, interview them about their part, and write a book. When a researcher by, by himself uh, talks about his research, he's very defensive, he is very down to the fact. He tries to explain on his part of the research down to how, how he did discover them. So what Lee was able to do to connect many researchers, zero point of view, remote view, astral projection, uh, uh, randomness of the events, homeopathy, all this wonderful, and by the way, and biophotonics, which is kind of a German field of, of research, Georgia's counterpart. Uh, Gurvich. Uh, so she, I mean, these are this, uh, Gurvich is um, uh, from last century. But, but in any case, she was able to combine it in one and um, explain it. And that was groundbreaking. For me, it was like, really, it's, I get it, now I get it. So the field is the book to, to uh, I went very slowly. It took me half a year to read because every page was like, wow. Now, Bill Wilcock, David Wilcock, wrote another book, which is The Source of the Mitigations. He is a little bit too light on things, but he has intuition, and my take is that he knows the answers already. But he kind of walks you through the path and gives you even more in that direction. So, Wilcock is another, Source of the Mitigations is another book to read. And when he talks about Gareth, he makes him God, and uh, think, uh, says that science has proven that. No, Gareth is good theoretician, but his science is poorly published, it's not real true. He can he also know the answers, but uh, his facts are very, very weak. But again, the idea is okay. So, when I finished that book, like three years ago, I sort of thought, uh, okay, but so all this, yeah, one of the, in the field, the field, one of the most striking experiments there was you send the particles through the two states, it's like scientific experiments, two, two states, send the particle. And the particle behaves like a, a classical physical experiment. You can send many different particles, electron, positron, whatever, uh, photon. The particle can supposed to go through one state and leave one trace. But what happens, it becomes a wave, it goes as a wave through the state. And on x-ray, you see what you typical typically expect from ripples of the wave. You, you are very familiar with water ripples. And there is a wave that kind of shreds and there, there is a periodic pattern. So you see a very clear periodic, periodic pattern. There's some period. Okay, so that's nice. But now how big can be a particle which can go through a, uh, to sleep to leave a ripple? So they took bigger and bigger particles. And at the time the book was written, it was uh, mm, I think it was 2005, 2006. Uh, the, the, the particle of 100 atoms, the crystal of 100 atoms, can go through two states and leave a ripple. So I can imagine you have two doors, you walk through two doors, and at the end there is many of you know, like in the building pattern. So what's the difference between 100 atoms and, and us? So when we feel something hard, we know for sure that we are made of atoms, atoms have electrons. And it's um, empty space, uh, dark and empty space. What we really have here is one field, electromagnetic field, and it's right in front of the field. So that's the main conclusion. And there is tons more there, like time effects, uh, effect of your mind on, on events in life. And things like that. So when I see the book, um, next to three years ago was. Hmm, Maybe after all, the aliens visiting us is not so a crazy idea. So I went to internet, I 
started digging. And for me, visual was more important than reading. So I just looked for pictures of grains. So that was like the most convincing for me. And when I saw that, it made me sick. Like there were so many good videos and pictures and UFOs. So I was looking like day and night for a week. And then I was sick. And I had allergies for another half a year. So it like really made me sick. And especially made me sick because uh, until that point a years ago, I was really driven by the idea that I'm on the front leading the nature science. I discovered something that nobody before ever touched. Like really, I was working with the leading science. And now it's like not so much so. <laughs> I they believe in us. Oh, they already had the, the, the bipartite code, they had the biofield code, they had all the sorts of time travel techniques. They control dimensions and uh, uh, and they can heal people, they can clone people. So that's a big hit. That's like one part of the piece. And, and then the realization that we are being bred. We are breeding for. That's another part of the piece. So that's where we, uh, where I started, and uh, I went pretty fast. Um, again, uh, my my uh, scientific, uh, let's say, intuition, scientific principle. I have like before I put you in, into like real stuff, it's still into the action. What a scientific uh, in Russia. I mean, I mean, the Russian experience was was great in a way that uh, propaganda was so obvious, it was so rotten. And you know for sure, if everybody walks in the same direction, they're all wrong. If, if, if many people walk in the same direction, they think the same thing. You can guarantee it, it's, it's wrong. It's, it's a result of propaganda. You have to walk in just the opposite direction to find something true, 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 true and original. Alright. Um, so non-conformity is one of the principles. Um, and then I had this daily experiments. I, I worked for more than 20 years in the lab, so I really know how it works. What is the real proof? You have good results today, you have good results tomorrow. You do the experiment over the course, and then you find it's all result of the artifact. So the artifact that kind of push the result in one direction. That's all it is. And the whole science is, is rotten uh, in many ways. Um, you can discuss it, but the main idea is that um, it's you get funded only by uh, consensus of other scientists, and these other scientists also get funded by consensus of other scientists. So if, if the whole field thing is kind of skewed in one direction, then it's very hard to get to do anything done because uh, uh, you kind of get the funding from other scientists. You, if you go against the flow, they will kind of uh, take the funding as they. So our whole uh, biological field is dominated by the idea of, of drugs uh, and pharmaceuticals. And uh, here's the point. Uh, just you know, from this biofield thing, there is beautiful, already true, proven healing effect of light of soft lasers. Uh, Toronto is great, but you have several companies and several clinics of soft lasers uh, which produce and treat people with special arthritis. So it's well proven, but it takes away from drugs. So if you can develop an electromagnetic, uh, a light-based drug to treat anything, then the whole economy based on oil and drugs kind of is shattered. Okay, so so that's one way. So so uh, what I want to do now, no, I really just want to do in general. I want to be developing this biophotonic research. Uh, so if you know any people who would fund it or collaborate, it would be great. I want to be a film and things, and I'm really like, today I'm talking about the stuff which is really interesting to me. So I want to be filming. So, uh, and I, that idea came from Chris. Chris said, he can film, I, I want to be with him, and I want to be filming too, and I want to be going elsewhere and doing the research and filming that research. That would be great. Ufology, extra, uh, supernatural, that would be wonderful. Uh, and I want to give, be given more talks, so if you want me to, if you want, want to invite me more, I will be happy. Maybe I will do more, less personal, more, uh, more uh, stuff. But you today, you do weddings and birthdays. That's a great question. So I did theological research, and apparently I'm coming from rabbinic, rabbinic lines. So. <laughs> 
if, I, if there is a, a kind of a service, I am on the side of the rabbi. I, I am <laughs> the nation. I am on this side of the sea. Uh, so, yes, sure. Uh, and uh, I was, um, and this is a line goes to 10th century, but I was um, very much into Judaism and the idea that that we are very special. I mean, science is special, I mean, Judaism is special, and God, I can make a deal with God. I serve the God, and the God helps me. Wonderful thing. That's like the answer. And now, today, Peel is. You have like a, a, a bad person. And this bad person, you brought this negativity to your life by, by your own. It, we're all part of, of the same say, matrix. And if people who listen to me, you can agree with me, you can disagree with me, and it doesn't really matter because you still are affected by what I say. In one way or another, and the sign doesn't matter because if you agree with me strongly, or disagree with me strongly, it's about the same thing. You get, you get it. And later say, oh, maybe, maybe it was not that same place. So there will be a lot of more crazy stuff in there. Okay, um, where we are. Um, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the God. The God, uh, uh, I'll get to that, but basically, there is no person there. It's, not, it's intelligence, but it's not looking at you, not judging. There is no judgment, no seeing, no punishment. You have a huge effect on, what you, on how life treats you, but uh, there is no personal community there which would, uh, which would. And that's a pity. I mean, it's nice to be watched by someone. And finally, they watch, but they are as happy when you do mistakes as when you do good. But when you see them, when you do all things, it doesn't really matter for them. Whatever you do, it's just the nature of interaction that matters. And the fact that it's a good or bad, like this Illuminati guys. They are as good in terms of higher intelligence uh, as we are. The only their problem, why they're not so good, is that you know if they damage whole humanity and kill billions of people, the experiment kind of fails because they need that experiment to to, pro to proliferate and prosper. That's why you know, they kind of being spammed for for uh, trying to kill 90 percent of people, but not not, not, not because of other people. Otherwise, the model of, of struggle is, is elevated, and evil is as bad in this model as, as, as good. All right, so okay, here we come to the things of introduction. <laughs> we come to uh, what's wrong?
torque is because the complete right here, that the this is huge. And I dig for stuff and then I when I write a book, I mean writing the book is I wrote the book in the same way Richard did. Richard said he called me. I'm thinking what would be what I want to do. I want to teach metaphysics and stuff. Mm. Is there any university around for the teaching metaphysics? No. How about Google it elsewhere? Is international metaphysical university. Um, and they say you just record 30 hours of your course, and um, and then you know, then uh, interact with the students and being paid not not not, 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 not too little, but the, the number of speakers they have is bigger than the number of students, unfortunately. They kind of start again. The interest is not there yet. So so but you know I look at the impulse and I started kind of thinking how we'll do that and I wrote the book. And thanks to Evolution, he was kind of also spoke with them and they kind of liked him a lot because he is one of the leading figures. And he also wrote the book. So so I we kind of go in the part of Richard is my role model. So when you write a book, you want to put references. And you start Googling uh, for keywords. And we get the page the big place where the most interesting stuff is. Another good place is Google Books. I mean, you can search Google and you can search Google Books. And Google Books are full text search of books from any time and absolutely much more specific because there is less junk. Whatever got in the books is better quality because the person can read it and stuff. So, so books are great. You don't really have to buy them all, but I buy them all uh, on Amazon cheaply. We use books; it's it's easy. And then, what if you don't like it? You sell it back. You kind of lose from them cheaply. So, uh, Google Books. But to get the sense of the book is you don't have to read the whole book. You kind of go here and there and get the sense. And then the thing is, uh, I, I urge you, uh, don't read the books in the beginning. Don't watch YouTube videos from the beginning. Before you watch a YouTube video, scroll to the middle. See, if you don't like the sound, don't like what they say, just keep browsing, keep browsing. And that is a great way of getting good quality information compared to, to junk. So that's the principle. Another thing, uh, I find that many of my uh, dear listeners uh, still use the Internet Explorer. And that prevented them from exploring the Internet. Because the <laughs> Internet Explorer catches uh, my, 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 uh, bad, bad viruses and bad malware. Malware, yeah. malware easily, easily, because it's most prone and uh, the hackers kind of know how to hack it. Firefox is better. Still, it's so popular. I can now talk into the Chrome. Chrome. Google Chrome is just newer. It's not as popular. That's why it's very rarely hot. So if you walk around the internet, you have to have a VGM device, free, Chrome, free. And the program app, if you want to install something, just close everything right away and run antivirus. But Normally, I browse for years without catching a virus because I don't use the internet. I can't if I it enough. So, so if you want to do, I, I already to do the research and to do it like APG and a few other uh, IT, uh, like IT spyware programs and uh, and also keep whatever you say if you write. But keep it in the cloud, so it's, uh, or in multiple clouds. It's so easy now. Drop boxes down. Drop boxes. Write it down, draw box, and down. So your computer doors, you have everything stored. Alright, so uh, the thread is one of the the book which kind of how can I will scroll a little bit. I will show you a little bit. So most convincing for me were again visuals about abductees are children's drawings. Where we see children drawing, showing the grave and the state and it's part of them. You can't walk away. I mean, it's, it's just. Um, of course, uh, someone can teach a child and ask the child to draw the things, but, but really, like, it's real. Children are being abducted. And uh, what happened, I uh, kind of liked some, some of that. I wanted to put it in my video, on my presentation. I asked the owner of the website who had these children drawings, if I came to them. 
daughter looked at what it was my wife and said, I don't know, it's, 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 you're, you're too sweet for that. You kind of sweeten the pill and we have been threatened, we have been exploited. So he pr prohibited me from showing that. And he told me to, he called me, uh, he told me to read a book, so I read it. And it was again, it was like I became sick. But we are really being bred, we are really being visited, uh, and uh, they implant the uh, hybrid implant, uh, embryos in, into women and then take them back after a few months. And that, uh, that's just because they can't really, uh, it's just easier for them to have them uh, grow, to grow uh, embryos in humans then and then out there. So um, that's one of the sources I highly recommend. It's, by the way, it's, it's not only about it's, it's interviews, interviews, like real, real stuff and it's, it's real. So the third line of these chapters. Um, the Keepers, this great book is um, um, Jim Sparks. Um, he's very specific, he tells you one of my interests is uh, biology of aliens and of grades. So what is so special about them? How do they function? For example, I'm almost certain they, not only they exist, they don't eat, they sort of breathe, and they uh, absorb nutrients through the skin, so they have to bath the nutrients once in a while. So bath the nutrients are almost certain. Uh, very which is very unusual. Uh, so the keepers by uh, Jim Sparks was very kind of enlightening uh, and revealing in terms of biology. Uh, John Mark, he interviewed a lot of people that have nice movies on, you can just go on uh, experiences on YouTube, just watch it. Uh, abduction. I ordered the book, I didn't read it yet, but I uh, browsed it a bit and um, he is dead of the key. Now, again, how was he killed? Uh, was the name something? Um, Peter Robbins is with us in our uh, UK stuff. No, from New York. Yeah. He's from New York, but he was doing the search in the UK. And he said, when the place where John Mark was killed, <coughs> there is no way that it was kind of uh, physically possible to organize this kid because the truck is as it was driving. And he stepped uh, uh, under the truck. He flew very far. I mean, it's impossible to organize that. Um, so you're saying it was natural? He was natural. Was or supernatural. I mean, if you can put in mind the German mind, not walk forward. You can do that. But it has like a okay, really high level. But it's not like, like a fine of people where you use like a you know, shooting of metal bar from the car. It would be like a metal bar. Just, it looks like it just fell from the truck, but you really can make a rifle and shoot a metal bar. Um, so again, um, he uh, died when he was in his full force and was doing real, making real difference. A lot of nice interviews. So these two I took from our Rochester on that team, and she is great in remembering a lot of details. Um, so I, I, I have like first hand uh, experience and I can record it at least. There is other, other. This one, you find characters in Australia, is on YouTube. It's uh, it's nice in a way. It's very clean. It's easy to swallow. I mean, thinking about the options, reading, you have to really separate uh, the information and entertainment value. Research, entertainment. Abduction research is of very low entertainment value. You really want to have to like to, to want to know the answer compared to enjoying. Uh, enjoy it. It's like really sad. But maybe at this point I'll have to explain. Why is it sad? It's sad from human point of view. It's uh, sad if you believe that we have been mistreated. Now, why would they abduct people? There is a large scale alien hybridization program run by grace for supervised by uh, trained methods people, which is pretty straightforward. There are other types of uh, humanoids there. So this is like trained methods, which are supervised by, as I said, by, it's, I don't have first-hand witnesses, but uh, David Pike said that 
this train of train lines is people also for one and one. Uh, Dracos, Dracos, and all right, different types of Drake, Drake, and all right. So, so there's some stuff there. It's, it's very kind of multi level. So, this, uh, so what are the, we don't know what are the purposes. One of those purposes is to make a backup of human stock. I know that I think it's Bill Gates now is running in the plant here, this program where they can store, print all the seeds of plants. So grapes do that for us. They not only store seeds, they store um, many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of embryos. It's like large scale storage. Thing. Yeah, so if we somehow do the global suicide, we can be uh, relieved by the idea that uh, we can easily restore uh, the, the genetic part. We can, we can recreate this. That's one of the reasons. Uh, second reason why they uh, run this habitation program is uh, they uh, see other plants with hybrids between us and them. How do you know that? Uh, I will talk about China in the, late, in the next part, but but I have to jump ahead and there is a wonderful channel. They're not very well known. How many of you have heard Bashar channel? B A S H A R. Half of you. So Bashar is great. I believe he's genuine, and I believe the only way to just how good he was, and how I like the information he delivered, and I like the time, time and everything. And then the Richard Dolan kind of he didn't like. I, and again, separate the entertainment value and um, research value, information. Bashar is hard to take. He changes you. And he's very negative in many ways. He's kind of too dominant, I would say. I mean, how the aliens look at us. They look from the past. So, so that's set up. You have to accept that he's like a, a, a best friend, I guess. <laughs> uh, but uh, the information he gives is, is a variable. And uh, uh, he is uh, an extra channel. The channeling is where you get in the higher heightened state of kind of meditation, self hypnosis, and a higher level of being physical, non physical talk to you or right to you. I'll talk more about it. But so Bashar is channeled by a human Dale Anka and they say he both of them. I mean Bashar and Dale when he is not channeling say that they say the soul. The same soul is incarnated now here on Earth and three hundred years in the future on a planet, on a planet named Esasani, and where the, the uh, culture of hybrid beings named Sasani, so Bashar represents this guy. So he kind of travels in time and hangs around the Earth in orbit, um, and channels to us, talking and um, promotes future collaboration between us and um, the political forces he represents. So apparently. One of the planets seeded by grace through hybridization of us and grace is this is a tiny planet. And there is another planet, and I've lost another name, Yoel, Yayel, Yayel. Another planet, another nation is Yayel, which is also a hybrid of us and grace and also uh, 